Hey everybody, welcome back to Super Retro. I'm Chris, and today I received a super exciting package in the mail from the Easter Bunny. Inside it is my copy of Final Fantasy VII Remake Deluxe Edition. And so I decided for today's video, I would unpackage it for you and make a little mini review. So let's check it out. So let's start with the fun part, the unboxing. As you can tell, this game has beautiful packaging. It's simple but sleek with its black color and its shiny artwork. Uh, the way the title almost puffs out and shines reminds me of the old Working Designs games. Uh, so let's go ahead and break the seal. This is one experience you just can't get with a digital copy. It's so satisfying and it almost reminds me of being a kid on Christmas. And would you look at that? It's gorgeous. It's just really sleek in design. I love the shiny artwork. Um, it really fits the nostalgia for me. Um, so let's go ahead and have a look on the inside. I try to be really careful with these cardboard boxes. And as you can see, the Deluxe Edition comes with all sorts of goodies, so I could not resist buying this version. Um, I wanted to get the bigger version, but it costs like $300, and I just don't have the money. <laughs> Um, so here's the game, and I love that they went with the original box art, but with a modern take on it. Uh, it makes it feel so nostalgic. On the back, it's got the same art as the back of the deluxe box, but I think it's sleek and it does the job. I cannot wait to play this game. So the second item in the deluxe edition is the mini soundtrack. And if you guys saw my videos last week, you probably know that I love the music from this game. There's only about 12 tracks from uh, the dozens featured in the game, but... Uh, these are all great selections, and I still think this is a great inclusion in the Deluxe Edition. Next up is the art book, and I love having things like this because they often give you an inside look into the development process of the games. As you can see, there's concept art for different characters, summons, weapons, and even locations. This shows you just a glimpse into the amount of detail put into the game creation process, and it's another wonderful inclusion in the Deluxe Edition. Lastly, we have this beautiful, beautiful still book uh, showing Sephiroth, the game's main antagonist. On the back side, you've got the logo, and on the inside, you've got the art from the game that inspired the box art, and it's as Cloud standing in front of the Shinra Corporation. And this actually functions as an alternate case for the game. As you can see, there's two places for discs, and like I said, it's just beautiful. Um, I think it's a great inclusion. I don't know if I'll use it, but I love it. And of course, this wouldn't be a proper unboxing if I didn't open the game itself. As you can see, it's extremely satisfying to unwrap the plastic on these games. Like I said, it reminds me of being a little kid to open these. Um, I wanted to check the inside to see if there are any inserts, and there are. As you can see, there's a place for two discs. Uh, one disc is a data disc, so you can install the game. And then the other is the play disc, because this game is extremely large. The other inserts are some rewards you can get. As you can see, you can get this Cactuar Summon in-game by entering a code. There is some promotional advertisements for these Play Arts figures that Square makes, and they're really high quality, really expensive later on down the road. Um, you can get 25 points for redeeming rewards on the Square Enix site, and then there's some other inserts but um one last thing to note is that the box art is reversible for those that may want a different look on their game case i love that this game has this option as you can see on the front you've got the original box art and then if you flip it over you've got this new sleek black design and um, as you can tell square enix went over the top to make this product special so now let's move on to the game itself Released in 1997, Final Fantasy VII was a game that took the normal conventions of an RPG and threw them out the window. While most RPGs at the time would take place in a bright fantasy world, Final Fantasy VII would immediately throw you into a dark, steampunk, Blade Runner type environment. The story begins in the huge metropolis Midgar. Midgar is ran by the Shinra Electric Power Company, a company that generates power by refining Mako, a substance which is known as the life force of the planet. You begin the game as Cloud Strife, a mercenary who was hired on by the rebel organization Avalanche to help them sneak in and hopefully destroy one of the Shinra Company's Mako reactors. 
The remake begins almost exactly the same as the original, and as you can tell, it is beautiful. One thing I've always loved about this game is how you are immediately thrown into the action. It hooks you right from the start. One of the biggest differences between the original and the remake is the elimination of turn-based battles for a much faster-paced, real-time battle system. While some may not like the change, I think it works really well and it helps you feel the intensity of battles which you may not have experienced in the original game. As you fight, your ATB gauge or action time battle gauge fills up, allowing you to perform special moves. You can even change Cloud's battle mode to go from fast paced to slow and hard hitting by switching from operator mode to punisher mode. Another feature I really like is the ability to take control of other characters at any time during battle. Other characters may have unique abilities that can help you out. For instance, Barrett can use his gun arm to hit enemies that Cloud can't reach. This just adds another layer to this new battle system. As I said before, this new action-based battle system can make fighting feel much more intense. One great example of this is in the first boss fight in the game against the guard Scorpion. While in the old game you could take your time fighting this boss, in the remake you have to constantly think or you will die. In this footage, you see Cloud and Barret hiding behind debris as the guard scorpion fires its tail laser. It's little details like this that can make each battle unique and fresh. I have to be honest, I got very close to dying in this fight because I thought I wouldn't have to pay much attention. Well, I was wrong. The environments in this game are insanely detailed and immersive. To be able to traverse fully explorable scenes that were just still pre-rendered graphics in the 1997 original is incredible, and it's a dream come true for a mega fan like me. The game takes an already strong narrative with already relatable characters and pushes them that much further to make you fall in love with them again and pull your heartstrings. You'll learn so much more backstory and it will push you to want to fight Shinra that much more. In the original game, I didn't even know Jessie was a girl because everyone looked like Lego characters. So this game will really take you further in developing the backstory. The original game was three discs, and the first disc was approximately the first nine hours of the game. This remake has stretched that first section into a full-length game, and so far, I think it has done it extremely well. While I could keep going on and on about how fantastic this game is, I think I want to wait until another time when I've completed the game to give it a full review. I want to see what you guys think, so let me know in the comments how you feel about the remake so far, and what you'd like to see from Square Enix moving forward. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can get notifications every time I upload new content. I really appreciate you watching, and I hope to see you next time. Peace.